Mr. Takarios, heavens, fancy seeing you here. Tara! That can't be you, can it? I suppose you won't be terribly shocked to find your old friend Tara amongst the pigeons. They've always been a personal favourite. My, is that a ring? For us? Oh, you shouldn't have. Enjoy yourself now, Tara. Looks like you've got yourself set up quite nicely here. She isn't my Trezim. She's my friend. And from the looks of things, it appears she's eating pigeons. Oh, right. Did you hear that, Tara? Um... Stop it. Well, these must be important birds indeed, Mr. Dakarios. Forgive me for feasting on their bodies and bones so very voraciously. Oh, she's agreed. Just about. The Annals of Carsus. Preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. That devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. Thing that ever happened to me, to us. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last. We'll be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. Some gods may delude themselves into believing they care about their worshippers, but when it comes down to it, we're all expendable. Children to be appeased, not respected. I worshipped Mistra loyally for years, and in that time she granted me the barest sliver of the power I was ready to wield. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Neither of us can know what truly may be if we don't at least try. Potential is nothing in itself. Just a fleeting dream unless we drag it into the waking world. Please, at least think on it.
Powerful as he was, Carson's lacks some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra intimately, and I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Carson's achieved many things. Hmm. He never managed that. A long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. It's been so long feeling... inferior. Shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me. Even. You're right. There aren't many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him. Or his folly. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Cassus. It would be the end of everything. It stands just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Go on then, Gail. We'll be here waiting for you when you're finished. Time was I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mr. again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Hmm. Not the message one hopes to receive from a past lover. But her first love was always the weave. At best, I was a close second. When I pictured this moment, I thought I'd feel more in control. Yet, yeah, here I am, with palms sweatier than a bugbear's armpit. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. I don't suppose you can imagine what it's like to have your god as your lover. It was intoxicating. An experience beyond expression. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. 
But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover. My chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity. Nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to Godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsus to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. Relieved. Drained. Proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place. And, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again. She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. The Carsite Weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? But I should have known. What right had I to go about declaring myself an archmage when I was as foolish as a common apprentice in setting such an entity loose? At least now I'm armed with the truth. And Mistress' expectations. It sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Perhaps. I see few other options open to me. If I ever want to reclaim those parts of myself, the orb snatched away. If I ever want to be me again. <laughs> An 
will have to disagree with you there. Having not one, but two parasitic entities within your body does very little for one's faith in one's personality. Still, I should take the compliment with the same generosity it was given, so... Thank you. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? <laughs>